Welcome back to Adventures in Randomia, my D&D solo adventure series. This is episode 7, in which Freya and Clarissa search for any remaining treasure in the castle and come across something unexpected. I hope you enjoy, and please do leave me a comment. It's great to read your reactions, questions and suggestions. Last time on Adventures in Randomia, we found Freya and Clarissa in the aftermath of their battle with the Aboleth. Clarissa discovered that she could cure Freya from the disease she contracted during the fight. Our two adventurers then leave the pool in the cavern and return to the surface. But before they could fully recover their health, they encounter two spectres in the ruins of the castle. After a brave fight, Freya is struck down and is only kept from death by Clarissa's Spare the Dying spell. We rejoin Clarissa as she sits in silent vigil, praying for her friend's recovery. Clarissa is kneeling beside the unconscious Freya. As the light gradually darkens into night, she continues her vigil, whispering prayers to her divinity that Freya will survive. So let's check how long is it before Freya starts to recover. We roll a four, so this means she regains one hit point after four hours. In the now dark cavern, Freya's eyelids flicker open, and she takes a gasp. Oh, where am I? Oh, Freya, thank goodness you're okay. I've been desperately worried about you. Clarissa whispers a thanks to her divinity. Freya lifts her head and looks around. Clarissa, what happened? One of the ghosts struck you down. You've been lying unconscious for hours. I'm sorry, I can't heal you yet. I still need to sleep. You mean you've been watching over me all this time? Oh! Clarissa! I don't know what to say. It's all right, Freya. The main thing is, you're alive. She helps Freya get to her feet. Come on, let's get out of this cave and back to the courtyard and see if that fire is still burning so you can warm up a bit. Together they make their way back through the archway into the triangular shrine room and then out into the courtyard. It is now well past midnight and very dark. There's a faint glow from the embers of the fire. Carissa gets their bedrolls out of their backpacks, and Freya sits down by the fire. The goblins must have some firewood around here somewhere, says Carissa. I'll go and search. So we ask the oracle if there's any firewood in the courtyard, and we roll a ten, which is a maybe, and suggest that we should do a skill check. Carissa rolls for perception and gets a sixteen. She searches around the courtyard and eventually finds some branches stacked under an animal skin behind a large stone. She brings them back, and soon the fire is burning brightly again. Oh, I'm hungry, says Freya. Do we have any food? She starts to search through her backpack and pulls out a few remaining pieces of the venison jerky. Clarissa also takes a look in her pack and finds a large bar of chocolate. They munch in silence on the dried strips of meat and some chunks of chocolate. Mmm, says Freya. Venison and chocolate go really well together. Who knew? After a few minutes, Clarissa turns to Freya. Now, Freya, you can sleep while I take first watch. No, Clarissa, you've been watching me sleep for hours. Let me take first watch. It's the least I can do for what you've done for me. Clarissa pauses for a moment. Well, if you're sure, Freya. Thank you. Clarissa curls up in her bedroll and drifts off into a much-needed sleep. Freya lies in her bedroll, staring into the flickering flames of the fire. However, with her injuries and exhaustion, she too soon falls into a deep sleep. So we ask the question, do they get disturbed in the night? We roll a one. This is no and, or an exceptional no. Despite the fact they are sleeping in a ruined castle and no one is keeping watch, they both have a full night of undisturbed, restful sleep. Next day, they both wake up refreshed, but in a sombre mood following the previous day's events. The revelations from the wizard's ghost, the sacrifice of Maeldros, and Freya's brush with death. Freya's usual ebullience has been knocked somewhat by the experience, and Clarissa is feeling the weight of responsibility, having had to revive Freya. So is this what real adventuring is all about then? Says Freya. That was one heck of a day we just had yesterday. But we did get some good loot from that wizard's chest. I'm looking forward to finding out what we can sell those pieces for. Yes, says Clarissa. I'm still trying to figure it all out myself. Figure it out? What do you mean, Clarissa? What is there to figure out? Well, there is still one last thing that is bugging me about all this. She pulls out a scrap of paper from her pocket. What's that you've got? 
This is the note I discovered on my Eldros when we found him unconscious in his room in the tavern two days ago. This must be what Lyra left after she poisoned him. It says, I have come to take your payment. That was his blood that was needed to deactivate the artifact. And then it says, may the sea claim you. So, the sea did claim him, kind of, with that fishy creature taking him. Yes, but how did she know that was going to happen? Did she know about the Aboleth? Was she trying to release it? Oh, Clarissa, you just do him a head in now. We'll never know, so what's the point in speculating about it? Just let it go. Clarissa nods. Yes, you're right. And she puts the piece of paper away. Come on, let's pack up and start heading back south. Oh, wait a minute though. I still have this iron key that we found on that goblin shaman. We can't leave without checking whether this opens a treasure chest. There's doors off this courtyard that we haven't tried yet. Let's just have a quick search, and then we head back. They head over to the door in the front right corner of the courtyard. So let's check on the door table to find out what kind of door this is. And we roll a 44, which says this is a locked and trapped stone door that requires a perception roll of 15 to spot the trap. They approach the large stone door. It has a curious design carved into it. Oh, this looks promising, says Freya. It doesn't occur to either of them to look for traps. Freya pushes the iron key into the lock and tries to turn it. Immediately, the trap is sprung. Three darts fly out from holes in the carved design. One glances harmlessly off her breastplate, the other two hit Freya in the shoulder and the arm, causing three piercing damage. As these are poison darts, she also needs to make a constitution saving throw. With the advantage from her Dwarven Resilience, she rolls an 18 and so avoids the poison effect. Ouch! Note to self, an ornate carving in a door means a trap. They try the other three exits from the sides of the courtyard but are unsuccessful. One is a locked iron door that they are unable to open. Then there are two unlocked wooden doors that are blocked by the fallen masonry in the cavern on the far side. Finally, they go to the large wooden iron banded door at the back of the courtyard. Freya takes the iron key. Hold on, says Clarissa. Let's check for traps. She rolls a six for perception. She peers at the door. Hmm, I can't see anything, but I don't really know what I'm looking for. So let's roll on the door table to find out about this large door. We get 81. This is a locked door, the key to which can be found on a monster elsewhere in the dungeon. Freya tries the large iron key in the lock. It fits and turns easily. Let's check for what kind of room lies behind this door. We roll an 18, which is an octagonal room, about 40 foot in size, with only one exit. Freya gently pushes the door open and peers inside. She can make out a dim, dank room that seems to be a combination of storage room and prison cell. They both step inside. There's a large, wooden, iron-built cage in front of them. They move forward to get a better look. Let's find out about the contents of this room. We roll an 88, which is an easy encounter. Suddenly, there's a loud growling, and three large wolves appear out of the shadows and pace towards them, snarling viciously. Freya tries to placate them. Easy, boy. Good doggy. But the wolves leap into the attack. So we roll for initiative. The wolves get 15, Teresa 8, and Freya 7. The larger direwolf lunges at Freya and bites, but misses, its jaws snapping close to Freya's ear. A second wolf also leaps on Freya and bites with advantage from tactics. Its teeth sink deeply into Freya's arm for eight damage. The third wolf launches itself at Clarissa and bites, but its snarling teeth miss their target. Clarissa holds up her divine focus and casts Radiance of Adorn for 14 damage. A brilliant burst of light radiates out from her, flooding into the room. The third wolf fails the saving throw and is killed outright, a bright flash of light roasting its body. Wow, Clarissa, you're getting good at this. Clarissa then casts Spiritual Weapon. A golden shining cat's claw appears above the two wolves in front of Freya. It swipes at the dire wolf, the golden claws strafing its head, and does five damage. Freya goes into a rage and roars at the dire wolf in front of her. So you want to play a rough? I'll show ya. She swings her mighty great axe, but it just slices through the air and she misses. The dire wolf lunges again at Freya, this time with advantage from pack tactics, with its pack mate standing right next to it. Its jaws crunch into Freya's leg for 12 damage. However, her rage now gives her resistance and she only takes six. The second wolf jumps at Freya again and sinks its teeth into her shoulder. She takes a further four damage. Clarissa casts Shield of Faith on Freya. 
A bright golden glow appears around her, increasing her armor. The golden cat's paw now slashes at the second wolf. The shiny golden claws strafe down the body, and the wolf slumps to the floor with a cry. Despite her injuries, Freya grits her teeth and makes a mighty swing with her axe. This time, the sharp blade slices into the snarling wolf and does 14 damage. The lone direwolf lunges at Freya and sinks its teeth into her neck and takes a further 5 damage. Frusa clasps her divine focus and casts Guiding Bolt. A bright stream of light flies across the room and strikes the creature in the chest. It leaves a mystical dim light glittering on the direwolf, which makes it more vulnerable to the next attack. With her advantage on this attack, Freya rolls a crit, which increases her damage. She raises her great axe high and slices it down with all her might. The blade cuts deeply into the beast's neck. It lets out a final cry as it slumps to the ground. With the three beasts slain, Freya and Clarissa look around the room. The room contents roll that we made earlier suggest that there could be a clue, an NPC, or a boon in this room, all with a chance of 30%. So we roll and find out that there is an NPC in this room. Suddenly, they hear a low groan coming from the cage at the back of the room. They rush over and are shocked to see a human male sprawled on the floor of the cage. Quick, Clarissa, can you save him? Clarissa reaches in through the bars and touches his hand. She casts Spare the Dying for the second time in one day. The man gives out a small moan but remains unconscious. She then casts Cure Wounds and he is healed for 11 points. He coughs and then rolls over onto his back and swears. Fuck! Water! Give me water, you damn goblins! Clarissa pulls out her water skin and pushes it through the bars towards him. He grabs it and pours it down his throat, although much of it splashes onto his neck and down his shirt. He leers himself up into a sitting position and peers out through the bars at them. You're not goblins. Who the heck are you two? And there we will leave our adventurers, wondering just who it is they have found in the goblin cage at the back of the ruined castle. Tune in again next time to find out who this is.